Welcome to another edition of Eyes on the Tigers, Channel 97 News. We come to you today from just outside the OHS library, and here's what you'll see on today's show. We'll see how the Oakville Golden Girls helped a special family. We'll see what to do over spring break. And Caden, Lewis, and Corey will investigate once again. We'll have all that and much more on today's edition of Eyes on the Tigers, Channel 97 News. And it all starts now. Welcome back to Eyes on the Tigers, Channel 97 News. I'm Maria Parker. And I'm Jana Frisella. There's been a lot of talk about what's going to happen to A&P next year. Let's take a look at the story to find out what has been decided. From students to teachers, the new A&P change is the talk of the school. So what we're trying to do is give kids choices other than what they have now. What exactly is going to happen to our beloved A&P? So we are going to be piloting our seminar program and that'll be piloted during term two and term five. Um, on the other days, which is excluding those 12 to 14 days for the entire semester, for sophomores through seniors, they're going to have 10 minutes of A&P time where they're just in their A&Ps for announcements, for grade checks, that sort of thing. But then the other 75 to 80 minutes, they're going to have for open travel, like we currently have open travel right now, where students can use the same passes that we've been using. Um, they're just going to have a more extended time to be able to do that. Although some teachers and the superintendent might like the idea. Let's take a look at what the students of Oakville think about the change. I personally don't like the AMP changes. I feel like the seminar thing is not really going to work out and I feel like we need more time to work on our homework, especially for like athletes and people who are like doing other school activities. I feel like it is beneficial. Um, it will help with the non-structured -structure, parts of AMP because I know there can be a lot of that but it still gives us a lot of time to do homework and stuff, so it's still helpful. Mm -hmm. I feel that there is an opportunity to make change, but I don't think that this will benefit the overall the students. Uh, I like how things are going with A&P and how they have been. It gives the students more of an opportunity to take ownership of their grades. Fortunately, students and staff will have a chance to express their feelings after testing the changes. At the end of that pilot, then we're probably going to put something out so we can weigh in. Uh, what are the things that you liked? What are the things that you didn't like for both staff and students? Lots of changes are happening in Oakville, and we hope that this A&P change is successful. With Abby Martino behind the camera, I'm Hayden Kirkpatrick for Channel 97 News. Now let's see what's happening around OHS. Student Council will host their fourth annual community Easter egg hunt this Sunday, and this year it's completely free. There will be egg hunts, games, and raffle baskets to make a wonderful day at OHS. Make sure to tell everyone you know to bring their family to this event. FBLA and DECA are hosting a dodgeball tournament. It's $5 per person, and if you want to make a team of your own, it's $40 for a team of eight. Pick up a form from room 106. NHS is sponsoring another penny delay on April 5th and 6th. One penny equals a one second delay of up to 30 minutes of academic work and all proceeds go to the St. Louis Crisis Nursery. The Technology Students Association will be hosting a LAN lock-in on Friday, April 6th. If you are interested in a night of games and food, stop by room 236 for more information. Congratulations to Connor Jones and Ryan Westwood both qualified for nationals in the National Speech and Debate Association. Some OHS students have been heavily involved with the special school district this year. Let's take a look. Kayla is kind. I think she's an honest and generous person. It's easy to see that special school is a big fan of Kayla Klipsch, but why is she so involved well, with these students? So most people know my brother Kurt. He has Tourette's and a couple other learning disabilities so he got services from SSC so I thought it's just really important to like make those kids feel included and feel like 
they have purpose and have worth. It was suggested to me, Ms. Kellerman and Mr. Biot, that maybe it'd be nice to have some kind of a social program for some of the students that we have here. I went to Ms. Learn and Ms. Learn said, oh, that's a great idea, but I have to take it to my students. So she told the kids what was going on and I'm assuming that my name was mentioned and Kayla said, I'm doing this. Kayla enlisted the help of fellow leadership student Maddie Mahalski to make this vision possible. She's developed projects for them to do and she's gone out and come up with some great games that we could purchase and create sort of a go-to box of ideas so that there's always something for that group of students to be able to work on and work on together during a &P. For Kayla's dedication towards the SSC program, she received the Special Ambassador Award on March 8th. So since I've started doing Lunch Buddies with SSC and now my A&P Buddies program, I hang out with the kids a lot and so now I, I'm kind of thinking I want to do special education. She has a really good gift with students and with people. She has a big heart. With Casey Lehman and Madia Parker behind the camera, I'm Jordan Basita for Channel 97 News. The Oakville Golden Girls have always had each other's backs. That's right. Let's take a look at how they came together to help out one of their own. Two, three, four. <laughs> on Saturday, February 17th, crowds gathered to cheer on the Oakville Golden Girls at a special event. So tonight the Golden Girls host their national send-off night, which is the last night for them to perform for their friends and family here in Oakville before we travel to Orlando, Florida, where we compete at nationals against teams across from across all over the United States. One of our junior Gigi's, she's an eighth grader this year, her name is Naomi, and her little brother is AJ, and this is AJ's prize drive. So I had heard about him doing other prize drives across the Oakville area, and we thought this was the perfect opportunity to team up with him and do a toy drive in his honor so that he could then take the toys to Cardinal Glennon. It gives him something to be really excited about, but it also gives the kids something when they go in for treatment to look forward to. While AJ is going out of his way to help others, he's going through his own struggles as well. He lives with congenital heart disease, chronic kidney disease, and this autoimmune disease. But right now we're stable, our kidneys are looking better, and we started doing this to help make him feel better. I have learned so much more about the generosity from people, like what the GGs are doing tonight. People you don't even know wearing toys. Thanks to AJ for all of his contributions. With Emma Miller behind the camera, I'm Jess Anderson for Channel 97 News. Congrats to the Oakville Golden Girls for getting fourth in mix and fourth in palm at Nationals last week. Nice job, Madia. Oh, thanks. Dance is something I definitely want to continue in college. Do you want to play any sports in college? Oh, I don't know, but something might just bounce out of nowhere. Let's see how that happened to one OHS senior. Jordan Joes yeah. has been playing ping pong for fun all of his life. I really started playing ping pong consistently when I moved here in fourth grade. Uh, we got this pool table, we got a ping pong table with it, and ever since then it's always just been a fun game for me and my brothers to come play. Little did he know, this tabletop game would bounce him into a life-changing opportunity. So it all started when I was applying for Lindenwood and on the application it listed a spot for life sports and if I was interested in playing. And I was looking through them and I saw a table tennis and I was like, oh, that looks fun. I listed that on my application and a few weeks later I got an email from the athletics admissions director and he gave me the ping pong coach's contact information. And I reached out to him, said that I was interested in playing on the team. He just said to me that they're willing to accept my interests. And they also requested to see an additional video footage clip of my, I guess, highlight tape for playing table tennis, which it was a lot of fun to create. I'd never done anything like that, but I emailed that to the coach and a week, about a week and a half later, he emailed back and basically just said, sign off here and you're on the team. And basically now I'm getting $2,000 to play table tennis for Lindenwood. I'm super excited about the opportunity and I'm going to see how it goes this first year of college and if everything goes great, I'll probably continue it. This was just totally unexpected thing. I never thought this would be happening by this point in the year. I think that just it just shows that with enough hard work and dedication, I mean, if you really seek an opportunity out and you do what you can to achieve that, everything really is possible. Good luck to Jordan and his future with table tennis. 
With Taylor and Adam Zaff, I'm Sophia <laughs> Delicato for Channel 97 News. <laughs> Even though Jordan just recently discovered what to do in college, there are some seniors that have had a certain passion all of their lives. Let's take a look at where one senior spends most of her time. Figure skating is more than a hobby for Jessica Klimple. She spends most of her days on the ice doing what she loves. Uh, Jessica started when she was five. She saw Ice Princess and when she, we finished the movie. She said, I want to do that. I put her off for a few months, but she kept at it. And then uh, she started lessons and she was horrible. Just FYI there, horrible, but she wouldn't quit. And then suddenly she became not so horrible and uh, she's just a joy to watch on the ice. In addition to competing solos, Jessica is part of the Blade Brigade synchronized skating team. My favorite part is like the bonds that I've created with my teammates and just being on the ice. I feel like home. I spend every waking minute at the rink. I'm up at Kennedy six days a week. Uh, I work there too, so on top of skating, I'm there as my job too. We went along with Jessica to her competition on February 17th. First place from Wayne C. Kennedy, Jessica Klimple. Congratulations accomplishment just being a senior I've been skating for a really long time and it was something that I look forward to um, the placement isn't really what's important to me it's going out there and skating my best and I feel like I did a pretty decent job today though she is a senior her figure skating career won't be ending anytime soon I am going to Western Michigan University um, and I'm gonna be skating on their synchro team I went and spent a weekend up there uh, doing a skating camp over the summer and it, I fell in love with the school and the team was awesome and I absolutely love the coaches. It's, I'm really, really excited about next season. Good luck to Jessica and her future plans. With Jenna Frisella and Nicole Schmitz behind the camera, I'm Mackenzie Knapp from Channel 97 News. Now let's go to Curtis Schmidt for more sports. Hi, I'm Curtis Schmidt and welcome to another sports roundup. Girls basketball hosts the district championship game against Webster on March 2nd. The girls trailed by a point with less than a minute to go, and Taylor Zard scored from the lane with 30 seconds left to give Oakville a one-point lead. Webster then missed a wide-open shot with three seconds to go, and Oakville held on for a 61-60 victory. It was their first district championship since 2009. Spring sports are starting up, and we have all the updates on all the spring sports on the next broadcast. We done? Yeah, we're good. Dude, I would break your and you would need some milk. Oh. Go! Two days, bro. What is this? <laughs> ah, what is what? that? You suck. Can we do anything else besides this? I don't want to eat these beans. I have an idea. Football. Where did you get? You look like. I'm John John Valenti. And I'm Curtis Schwinn. And this is what to do and what not to do over spring break. And remember, kids, be safe and have fun. <laughs> Hi, I'm Curtis Schmidt, and welcome to another sports roundup. We have just received breaking news. Curtis Schmidt is currently in recovery, but there is another OHS student that may be in danger. 
Caden and Lewis check up on Corey and their latest installment of investigative reporting. Hi, I'm Corey. Hi. Hi. You're coming with us, Corey. Oh, what's up, guys? What did I do? What's in your hand, Corey? It's just my jewel. What's the big deal? We'll show you. I'm Captain Lou Albano talking about drugs. Kids, hey, look, be afraid it's to Mario. No. Drugs can kill. And if you do drugs, you go to hell before you die. Oh, oh my goodness, whoa, that's no, that's correct. Uh, uh, I think that was the wrong video. Yeah, okay. okay. Look, I know what you're trying to do, guys, but it's not going to work. Lewis, we have to show him the future. Got it. Hold on. Oh my gosh, what happened to me? The jewels weren't enough. You started using cigarettes too. Now you're hooked up to a machine. Let's finish what I started. Guys, thanks for not forgetting about me. Well, that wraps up this edition of Channel 97 News. We hope you join us for our next broadcast on April 10th. If you would like to see more of our content or stay up to date on what's happening at Oakville, make sure to visit myohsonline.com. We recommend every student to have it bookmarked in their browser so you can check it out anytime you'd like. We post new stories all the time. Thank you for joining us, Oakville. I'm Jennifer Sella. And I'm Madia Parker. And remember, Oakville, keep, keep your, your eyes, eyes on, on the, the Tigers. Tigers. You're still here? The broadcast's over. Go home. Oh, the bathroom's locked.